ChatGPT is roaming the internet, free to do what it wants, except you get to tell it what to do. That's right. They released OpenAI Operator, which is, again, not the greatest name. That is not their talent, and that is okay. It is a remarkable piece of technology. It is in the OpenAI Pro plan, so you are going to pay an arm and a leg for it, uh, $200 a month. But I did get a chance to play with it, and I want to tell you about it because it does feel like playing with the future because fundamentally, these chatbots have been locked away in a corner of our computer. It's, it's really weird to be in a world where you can tell ChatGPT to basically go and do intelligent things on the internet, and then you can disappear and go away and take a shower, or you can go and do something else on your computer, go for a run, and it comes back and like it's still working away. It's doing a thing. Now, it's not perfect. I had an instance where I was testing it on shopping. So I went to my uh, Amazon account. It actually did a great job of turning away and closing its eyes, metaphorically speaking, so I could enter my password. It told me it was no longer taking screenshots and I was in control. And so I was able to enter my password and get into my Amazon account. And then it started shopping. And I told it I wanted, of course, more beanies. So it goes and starts shopping for beanies. The taste is not super great. I'm, I'm going to have to work with it on like its taste in beanies, but it, it was able to add to cart. It was able to say, okay, you don't want that one. You want this one and adjust its preferences. It's, it sort of checked in with me. The, the problem came when it tried to make a clean cart for checkout. And I didn't ask it to do that. I am one of those people that uses that feature of just check out these one or two items. And I leave a bunch of junk in the rest of my cart that I'm thinking about, oh, maybe I need that someday. So I had like 40 something items in the cart. And for ChatGPT, apparently things need to be neat and clean. And so it added the beanies in and then was like, I'm removing these other items from the cart. And it was clearly like, Nate, you're a messy boy. Why are you leaving all these items in the cart? And I was like, oh gosh. So it removed them. And like, this is one of those things where there's a reason it's called research preview. It does check in with you about some things, particularly financial transactions, which is great. But sometimes it is genuinely an agent and it takes actions on your behalf. And so it genuinely took actions on my behalf, didn't check in with me and just emptied my cart. I was not happy. I went in and I told it, you got you to gotta stop that. Like go back to your error logs, figure out what was in the cart and put it back. And I would say that was a partially successful conversation. It did not have the ability, apparently, to go back to the error logs and identify the items it took out. So that didn't work. But it had made a reasonably intelligent decision in the first place. It had just forgotten to communicate it, which is very human. Uh, it had decided to put them in save for later. So they weren't gone forever. They just got moved to save for later and it forgot to tell me. It all worked out. Look, it's not just for Amazon shopping. It's actually for serious stuff. You can use it for sales prospecting. You can use it for competitive marketing intelligence. You can use it for building portfolio sites. Like you can go to operator and have operator work on the web for you on an AI building tool to build something. It, it's stacking intelligence into the web. And so I think that even though it's called research preview, even though it's really janky at times, it's not perfect. The fact that we have let chat GPT onto the internet is remarkable. I, I really feel like I'm living in the future. And I will say the difference between this and Claude model context protocol is stunning. Number one, it's really easy to get on board. I literally go to the operator section of OpenAI, and I say, I want to try operator. And as long as I'm on a pro plan, it says, great, here you are. And I just start chatting. And it's super seamless. The browser is in the chat, which I actually would have thought that's a terrible idea. But intuitively, it works. It works really, really well. You can expand it in the chat and see a bigger window when you want. You can take control whenever you want. So you feel like you're watching, but you're not out of control. You can give it new instructions whenever you want. It's a really good interface. Um, and model context protocol from Claude, like it was janky to set up. Very few people set it up. And then it was not super dependable browsing. It was hard to see what the thing browsed. And it would just come back. It's This is so much better. More people are going to use this.
And they, I think that the difference in usability is going to mean that this is actually used for real work as opposed to just sort of as something that someone who is a developer could use for specific tasks. And by the way, I know developers do real work. I know that developers and other people have used Cloud Model Context Protocol for important jobs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying by and large for the for the person who is using chat GPT more than any other model, and there are hundreds of millions of them, this is a breakthrough that will help them see that chat GPT can browse the internet and nothing else will come close. From an agent perspective, this is probably the number one most used agent of 2025 that we're looking at. All the other agents that people are going to build, even if they're smarter for different jobs, they're not going to be this used. ChatGPT has a consumer brand. And if I tell people ChatGPT can browse the internet now, I get attention in a way AI agent hype doesn't get me attention. If I say AI, AI agent to someone who's not a venture capitalist or who work, doesn't work in tech, people are like, what's that? But if I say ChatGPT can run around the internet and do work for you, people pay attention. And that's what they figured out. And I think that's a pretty big deal. So if you're in the pro plan, definitely check it out. If you're not, I put up a whole sub stack on it with screenshots. You can see all about it. It's not just the Amazon thing. I did a restaurant thing. I did a travel thing. I did researching for kids activities. I'm still getting to know it, but there's a lot there and it's, uh, it's good to dive in. So there you go. That's OpenAI's operator.